Um, it's, you know, Donald Trump and the people around him. I mean, Stephen Miller with his uh, America First or whatever it is, legal thing, um, you know, on the, kind of on the front, the leading edge of this. But this is, uh, you know, authoritarian governments are always drawn from and always represent, first and foremost, the interests of the majority group in, within their country, right? Uh, the Christians in 1933 Germany, Orthodox Slavs in, in Russia, Hindus in India, whites in America. And authoritarian leaders always bind themselves to these majority groups by defining members of minority groups as the enemy of the larger minor minority or the larger majority, demonizing them and subjecting them to economic and physical brutality under the nation's laws. And this is exactly the dynamic that's now being played out in the United States by the nearly all-white Republican Party. They have extensive plans to exploit charges of racism against white people to seize control of the American government. And according to Donald Trump and the MAGA GOP, racism has become a huge problem in America, specifically racism by minorities against white people. Seriously, I'm not making this up. Now, reality doesn't quite line up with this, the fact of the matter is that for people of the same age and with the same level of education, black men earn 72% of what white men earn. The median black family in America has $27,000 in wealth. The median white families um, has uh, $250,400 in wealth. Roughly two thirds of white families own stock, 66%. Fewer than a third, 29% of black families are able to invest in the stock market. About a quarter of black families have no wealth at all, but are in debt compared to only 11% of white families. About three quarters of white families, 72.7% own their own homes compared with 44% of black families. And it's even harder for black people to vote. Black voters are twice as likely to have to wait more than a half hour in line than white people. But, you know, the, the Republicans are like, no, 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 the, that, that is not the problem. The problem is that white people are being discriminated against. And this, I mean, this is not just some wackadoodle Trumpy fringe in the Republican Party. John Roberts, when he worked in the Reagan administration Justice Department back in the 1980s, John Robin, Roberts was outspoken in his uh, opposition to the Civil Rights Act. You'll recall Barry Goldwater opposed it also back in 1965. John Roberts wanted it reversed, wanted it gutted, wanted Reagan to do away with it. Reagan wouldn't do it. And so when Roberts got put on the court as chief justice after, you know, <laughs> by George W. Bush, after Roberts helped advise the Bush campaign down in 2000 down in Florida, Roberts and Kavanaugh and Barrett, the three of them were down there advising, you know, Bush's attorneys to, you know, how to challenge before the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, you know, Bush put him in charge of the Supreme Court. And then in, in 2013, uh, 2013 uh, he wrote the decision saying that the, the Voting Rights Act is like an anachronism. It's a, there's no longer racism in America, don't you know? We have a black president. How can you say that America has any racism at all? Uh, this is what he wrote. He wrote, our country has changed. While any racial discrimination in voting is too much, Congress must ensure that the legislation that passes to remedy that problem speaks to current conditions. Right. So Congress uh, passed $4 billion in COVID debt aid to minority farmers. Federal judge in Florida blocked that because white farmers were excluded. When in the wake of COVID, COVID uh, Congress passed and the Biden administration rolled out a $29 billion program to aid restaurants. And during the first four weeks of that program, preference was given to restaurants owned by minorities or by women. Again, you know, a Trump-aligned group successfully sued before a Bush-appointed judge by claiming that the program was an example of discrimination against white men. Last year, Republicans on the Supreme Court responding to another right-wing lawsuit ended affirmative action in college admission programs. So now what we've, what we've seen in the, in the year since this has happened, or in the school year since this has happened, is that black enrollment in colleges has gone from 7% last year to 4% this year. This is outside of HC, HBCUs. All across the nation, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs and other efforts to undo over 400 years of institutional racism are falling under pressure from white Republican politicians, judges, and activists. Uh, Project 2025 says that they're going to do away with all the DEI programs. 
Um, Donald Trump said, every institution in America is under attack from this Marxist concept of equity. Yes, it's, it's Marxist to say we should, we should do something about the, 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 the crisis that has been caused by four or five hundred years of explicit you know, institutional racism. Trump goes on to say, I will get this extremism out of the White House, out of the military, out of the Justice Department, and out of our government. Right. Yeah. Which shouldn't surprise us at all. I mean, you know, given that the very first time Donald Trump appeared in the New York Times, it was a profile of his father talking about how he and his father were preventing black people from renting properties in the Trump uh, middle class property. You know, they, they, they uh, had built all these uh, kind of middle class apartments. So, you know, this is this is what they're up to. And, you know, the bottom line is that democratic governments are typically driven by defining the public good in the most ex inclusive you know, manner possible. Authoritarian governments, on the other hand, are driven by fear and hate. And that's what this is all about. This is all about driving fear and hate that Trump, his legal beagles and their white MAGA followers are all promising. And, you know, is this the, the kind of country you want to live in? I, you know, I, I just find this, uh, frankly, shocking that Republicans are like, hey, everything is fine. There's no, there's no reason to do anything about race or diversity or equity. You know, it's all good. Well, it's all good from their point of view because, you know, white men basically control America, every aspect of America. And they want to keep it this way.